So, pretty much everyone who has an American army for bolt action has this box, right? Well, how can we make it unique? What if instead of focusing on Europe, we look towards the Pacific theater? So recently I was looking through the Marianas and Palau campaign book and I couldn't help but notice all the new units and the theater selectors for the U.S. Army, which got me thinking, how can we best represent Pacific Theater U.S. Army infantry on the tabletop? Currently there are no 28mm kits on the market that are for this flavor of U.S. infantry, uh, save one from Company B, which is for the early war fall of the Philippines. Since the Army fielded 6 Corps and 21 Divisions to the Marines' 6 Divisions in the Pacific, I figured it was time to get some Army units on the table. So grab your hobby tools and your favorite paints, and let's jump in. The easiest way we can distinguish our American infantry for the Pacific Theater is to get them looking like they are in a hot climate. The easiest way I can think of to do this is to grab the Warlord U.S. Marine Sprue. Most of the arms here feature rolled up or even completely removed sleeves because it was hot in the Pacific. Basically any of these arms will work for our needs, though I'd only use this pair holding a Springfield rifle if you are building for the Guadalcanal campaign or something similar, as they were phased out by the army in exchange for the newer Garand rifle. You may need to make some small adjustments to the marine arms to get them to fit against the army bodies, either by shaving the contact points with your hobby knife or filling any gaps with green stuff. Then, glue the arms to the army body and attach a head and canteen from the army kit. And really, that's it. This simple kit bash is enough to create some unique American infantry. You could stop here, or you could go one step further. Many of the GIs and reference photos I found had their fatigues untucked over their gaiters. I'm sure soldiers and other theaters did this as well, but it seems to be a telltale sign that you're looking at an infantryman from the Pacific Theater if you see it. So how can we replicate it? My initial thought was to grab one of the marine bodies that featured untucked pants. I used a hobby saw to remove the torso from the waist and did the reverse on an army body. After some sanding, I glued the two halves together and... <laughs> no, 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 no. This wasn't gonna work. The newer US infantry kit is ever so slightly bigger than the older marines kit and this just looks too top heavy. I mean, I'm top heavy too, but I think we can do a little bit better. Not to mention, it's hard to keep the ammo pouches intact and also have a seamless fit. So let's try something else. Well, I was hoping to avoid green stuff for this project just for the sake of simplicity, but I think it will be the best way to untuck these fatigues from the boots. I started by using my hobby knife to shave off the folds in the pants around the gaiters, and then I did my best to smooth the gaiters themselves flat so the green stuff I apply in the next step didn't bulge. My thinking is that it's better to take off slightly more than you think you need and work with thicker layers of green stuff rather than trying to have an ultra thin layer of green stuff over the plastic. But you know, I'm not a seasoned sculptor, so it's really up to your preferences. Anyways, I then mixed up some green stuff and tore off some small patches. These patches are placed over the areas we just shaved and then smoothed out with the sculpting tool. I didn't worry too much about trying to sculpt folds into the fatigues, but I did try my best to make sure I smoothed out the transition from green stuff to plastic. Once I had them looking decent, I grabbed a tiny ball of green stuff and rolled it into a thin sausage shape. I applied it all the way around the bottom of each pant leg. I then slightly press in this shape to flatten it out a bit and give the appearance that the pant legs were folded like in many of the reference photos I've seen. One last thing I tried out was adding a small hole in the pant leg where a bullet or maybe some shrapnel passed through but just missed the leg. And just like that, you've got some untucked fatigues and a unique look to your US infantry. Of course, you can take this even farther if you wish, like removing the thigh pockets on the fatigues and the suspenders that hold up the webbing, but for now, I think this is enough converting. 
However, we have one last step to make these GIs stand apart from their European theater counterparts. U.S. infantry in the Pacific wore different fatigues than those in other theaters of the war, so a few color choices in the painting step will really help differentiate these GIs. My reference photos show the uniforms to be a greenish-gray color, so I started there. I figured a good color would be somewhere between AK's Hellgrau and light green uniform, but after a little bit of experimenting, I decided to go with the light green uniform as my base. Of course, the actual real-life fabric could be a whole range of green colors due to different dyes being used, salt water and the sun bleaching the uniform, stress from combat, etc, etc. So don't stress too hard about the color you choose, and feel free to use a few different shades of green on different miniatures in a single unit. In fact, that's a great way to add variety and is totally plausible. Anyways, after getting the base coat on, I made sure to paint the webbing and the gaiters with Vallejo khaki. This breaks up the green quite nicely. The rest of the colors on the miniatures are pretty standard, so after I painted them and applied a nice strong tone wash, I got to working on my highlights. The final important step in my opinion is to highlight the fatigues with thinned down khaki to get that sun bleached, heavily worn look I mentioned earlier. Once you get your other highlights on, add some jungle basing, and as always, stick a tuft on there. This should leave you with something like this. Well, these guys are ready to take on the Japanese in the South and Central Pacific. I'm pretty pleased with how they turned out. They look rough and they look rugged. The guy with the sleeves torn off reminds me of this guy from the thin red line. I like this project because you can take it as far as you want to, whether that just means kit bashing the arms or even doing more conversion work than I did. No doubt you can create a very unique army this way. Thanks for joining me today and let me know what conversions for bolt action you'd like to see me tackle in the future. Until next time.